I recently tried to install Arch Linux on my system and failed. Turned out the guide I was using was a bit more for advanced users and a nice, easy to use beginner's guide has gone, but can be found in an archived format, but I didn't notice at the time. So I failed. Happy though there is an alternative to easily get Arch going on your system. With this distribution here called Manjaro, or Manharo, I believe it is Manjaro Linux. So it is an Arch base, but has a nice graphical installer, and literally this installer was so simple, I, I would actually say it was simpler than installing Ubuntu or Debian on my system. It found the drivers for me straight away, yes I'm running it in VirtualBox again, but literally there was no question, just got on and did the job. Perfect. How can I criticise a Linux distro that does the job for me? So let's take more of a look at it. So I have gone for the KDE version of Manjaro, and this is using KDE version 5.8.2. I believe that is the latest build at the moment, because that is what I have in KDE Neon at the time of recording. So when you first boot up, you get this nice welcome screen. Not quite as advanced as some of the welcome screens I've seen, but look, it's giving you the basics about the system. And we have links to forums, chat rooms, mailing lists, as well as how to get involved and for donations. So let's not show the page on startup and close that. So, in fact, that is more helpful than KDE Neon, which is my distro of choice. Hmm. So the launcher I've gone for is the full screen dashboard, but you can easily change that. Just simply using the right click and then alternatives. So you've got the choice of an application launcher or menu. So let's just switch it. And I don't want to spend too much time on this really because I've talked about the KDE desktop at length before on you know, several different occasions. So I want to talk more about the Linux distro itself. What are we getting within Arch? What is so special about this compared to Ubuntu? Um, let's just start with here and memory usage. I'd say that is pretty much on par with what I have in KDE Neon. It's, it's around 700 meg out of 4 gig. It's not the lowest I've seen on a KDE desktop, but it did cache and program, so I've not started quite from a clean desktop, which is a bit unfortunate. The icons that we're getting on the taskbar, so you've got the show desktop, link to the waste bin, now this Manjaro settings manager. So I'm going to right click that, and you've got the options of installing additional kernels or language packages, or even going into the options. So having a look at the kernels first. So I'll just pop my root password in, and look, got a nice easy kernel switcher here. That's well over and above anything I've seen in Ubuntu or Debian. The rest of the icons here we get in a default, so yeah. Links to the time and calendar. That's an icon for what would have been Cashew in previous days of KDE 4. The icon set they've used is a bit more of a custom one, it's not the Breeze icon theme. I'll come on to that a bit more in a moment. So they've installed quite a number of applications. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on the applications, that's a very boring aspect of the Linux distribution, but it, it does seem to be quite bulky. We've got a couple of things in education. We've got Steam pre-installed, so for your games. Graphics, I was just playing around, so I installed GIMP, but everything else on that page was pre-installed on the system. For internet, you've got Firefox for your web browser. Multimedia, you've got VLC for the media player, and we even had Cadian Live installed. Office, you've got what looks like the full suite of LibreOffice. So settings and system, we've got a few different things there. And utilities, well, there's quite a lot on here. HP Device Manager. <laughs> they certainly have included quite a number of drivers on the system. Yeah, so the, uh, the VirtualBox Guest Editions drivers was installed out of the box. I wonder if the likes of the NVIDIA and AMD graphics drivers are installed out of the box as well. So it would like select them for your system. This is one of the software installers, and it reminded me very much of Synaptic Package Manager. Just typing in a package name, and yeah, it's just type package name and uh, install it. Got a bit of information about it, so yeah, it's a, it's a basic type of package manager. It's not a fancy software center where you have application ratings and reviews, so yeah, this favors more an intermediate or advanced user. Looking back at the system settings, so what we have. Manjaro Notifications and Manjaro Settings Manager, as well as the KDE System Settings, so a bit more interested in the Manjaro Settings Manager. Now we saw the link to the kernel settings earlier. So we've got Language and Language Packages, Settings of User Accounts, Time and Date, and the Hardware Selector. 
So let's go into hardware detection. And it's picked up my network card. Brilliant. That's where I stumbled in the end on a Arch installer. So yeah, we got the list of hardware on the system. So it's identified everything. Let's have a look at these language packages because it was bugging me on boot up. Okay, that's additional language packages we get for the various applications. So Firefox, GIMP, and the Hunspell dictionary you can use in LibreOffice. Ah, that's simple. And that's a stumbling point I found on KDE Neon. Why is it an Arch system now is so simple to use and the Ubuntu system is not? And this is rolling release, so it'd be so similar to KDE Neon as well. You're getting a, a brand new bleeding edge KDE desktop. Of course, to go over and above, like the whole system is bleeding edge. Really, once you install the system, you could keep it going for years and still have bleeding edge software. I think I could really take to using this system. I, I've not found any real difficulties here. I mean, the front-end KDE system is something I'm already used to, so no problems there. Yes, I could change some of this theming, so I could take the default Breeze theming, which, to be honest, I kind of prefer over those icons that they've got. But that's maybe because I'm used to the theme now. So upon logging back in, I can see I have the new icon theme. So that is the Breeze icon theme, which I'm a bit more used to. So if I'm sat here looking at a like-for-like -like system between Manjaro and KDE Neon, where both KDE desktops look the same, uh, what is the difference? Well, realistically, the difference is at the back end. Um, that's with the package set that you're getting and maybe some responsiveness, which, to be fair, I haven't found the responsiveness too much difference between the Arch system to Ubuntu. So that was a look at Manjaro Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.